NBC Sports, home of the Olympic Games, the NHL, the Triple Crown, the NASCAR playoffs, and primetime's number one show, Sunday Night Football, only on NBC. To the end zone, he is in this second in his New England debut. Touchdown, Seahawks! Don't stop, keep going. Don't stop, keep going. Sunday night football in the Pacific Northwest. The air quality has cleared. Lovely evening in Seattle and two of the game's perennial quarterbacks that we watch so often on display. Russell Wilson, MVP form during Seattle's win in Atlanta last week. And tonight, he'll go up against Cam Newton and that get used to it, new look Patriots offense. It's the Pats and the Seahawks. They played the Super Bowl, gave us a great Sunday nighter four years ago, and they will give us Sunday night football here on Sunday number two of the NFL season. But as always, we begin with Football Night in America. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico, Tony Dungy, Chris Sims. We've got Rodney Harrison and Mike Florio along the way. A lot of points again, just like week one in the NFL, and points late for Dallas. Rodney, let's start with you about what stood out for you today. I got to give a lot of credit to head coach Mike McCarthy. The Cowboys never gave up. They were down 29 and 10 at halftime. And you always have a chance to win when you have these type of weapons. But to me, today's show, what type of player and what type of leader Dak Prescott was, what a tremendous victory for Mike McCarthy and the boys. Those crazy highlights ahead. Meantime, in that division as well, Philadelphia, what's going on? Since the Eagles were up 17-0 a week and a few hours ago, they've been outscored 54-19. They're 0-2. Good thing no fans are there to boo them right now, Chris. Yeah, good thing. Well, I'm going to go to Buffalo. Josh Allen, so far, two weeks in the NFL, this has been the best player in the league. They have put the ball in his hands, and he has been delivering with his legs and improved throwing, Coach. And the opposite of that for me is the Minnesota Vikings. They were a playoff team last year, 0-2 this year, no production in the passing game, no big plays. They really missed Stephon Diggs and what he gave out. Yeah, they did. Hey, guys, last year in week two, several significant injuries to key players. This year in week two, several significant injuries to key players. Nick Bosa of the 49ers, Saquon Barkley of the Giants, feared to have torn ACLs. Christian McCaffrey's got an ankle problem. He's going to be evaluated tomorrow. Jimmy Garoppolo, a high ankle sprain. Drew Locke, a shoulder injury. He's expected to miss time. Bad day for several high-profile players in the NFL. I'll say, there was an hour from, like, 115 to 215. You like, didn't want to watch the next play. You no, were afraid who else was going to get hurt. And, Tony, maybe last week we were thinking this was going to happen but we see it this week yeah and i was concerned about this as a former coach where you have no off-season program you have no preseason games and now your guys are coming out going 100 miles an hour for the first time we didn't see it last week but i think it, it caught up with it it caught week. up no doubt i agree you're beat up from last week still still getting game ready but no otas no preseason like coach talked about training camp the whole process was sped up we shouldn't be shocked to see guys going down right now you know i texted ben roethlisberger last week just congratulating him on being back and he texted me back and mm -hmm. said I didn't remember how sore you get after a game, and I <laughs> yeah. think this second week we're, we're starting to see some of that. Boy, in San Francisco, we'll get into it later, but Garoppolo hurt, Raheem Mostert hurt, Bosa on the front line. They already were without Richard Sherman. A lot of key injuries right. to the 49ers who uh, expect to battle Seattle in the NFC West, and Sunday Night Football is going to give us that rematch with the Seahawks, that great Super Bowl 49 in the game four years ago in Foxborough against the Patriots. They meet again tonight. Jack Collinsworth was in South Bend at the Notre Dame game yesterday. Cross country to Seattle, and Jack's with us tonight along with old what's his name hey jack <laughs> that's right mike welcome inside century lake field cc you think anybody's confused yet not yet close though. <laughs> not quite yet so cam newton had the fewest pass attempts in the league last week with 19 how sustainable you think it is to run him like that 16 plus games i i, I don't think so this is the national football league eventually you're going to be behind eventually you're going to have to open
open up and throw the football. And at this point, I honestly would be more confident in Cam's ability to throw the ball than I would be in this group of receivers' ability to get open. That was the big question even last season when you're talking about with Tom Brady. Are these guys good enough? If they get behind out here tonight, we're going to find out. And there were questions about how Belichick and Newton's personalities might mesh. What have you been told through a couple of weeks? Well, you know me. I had to ask Cam that question. I said, when you got the word that, indeed, you were going to go to New England, were you worried at all about going there with Belichick? And he said, yeah, of course. I didn't know if I could be myself, dress like myself, say the things I wanted to say. But he said, honestly, since the moment I got there, I have never been even remotely uncomfortable. I feel like I fit right in from the start. Well, I really miss watching football with you on the couch, but how about we even have Al hanging out on the couch back here (laughs) with the hog. We'll be back to CenturyLink. We're counting you down to kickoff right after this. This game's all about opportunities. Let's bring the momentum ourselves. Go wait for it. Go get it. The thing that brings out my love and passion on game day is my family. a little bit if that at-home football field played a factor in the offensive explosion in week one there is Russell Wilson getting ready for the Patriots tonight and Bill Belichick said this week he doesn't see a quarterback better than Russell Wilson never got an MVP vote what am I missing here well pro football focus had him as the MVP so you know he would have gotten my vote for MVP so I could have killed that streak but I got kicked out of the club because I was late with my vote the year before (laughs) so that's why he doesn't have a vote for MVP and then you had a fourth and five last week they go bomb the DK Metcalf through Seattle what's that tell you about the new mindset starting to form A, a lot more aggressive on the defensive side and on the offensive side this was the first drive of the third quarter up 14 to 12, fourth and five. They don't just go for the first down. They go for it all. So on both sides of the ball right now, we're seeing Pete Carroll being willing to let Russ cook. That is the new word around here. Let Russ cook. And he did some cooking indeed last week. I mean, the Patriots at the end of round one back in 2019, they had their chance to take DK Metcalf. Instead, they go to Nikhil Harry. How does that play out tonight? Don't rub it in, man. (laughs) Don't rub it in. Both of these quarterbacks are a lot for any defense to defend. Mike, how do you even try to begin here? Yeah, it's kind of odd, Jack, because we're we're watching these teams. And, Tony, you you tweeted this out this morning. I thought it was perfect. You almost got to change your mindset about how both of these quarterbacks operate with these teams right now. You do. The personality of the teams has totally flip-flopped. In the past, Seattle pound it, run the ball. Well, now it's Russell Wilson. So I think New England comes in and says, you know what, we've got to stop them from throwing and make Seattle run. Other side of the coin, whenever you play Tom Brady, we've got to take away the passing game from New England. Well, Seattle today, we've got to stop Cam Newton from running, force them to throw. I think it's a different mindset. It's a cool big picture. Let's unpack it a little bit. Rodney, how does New England on the defensive side go about this tonight? Well, Coach Dungy, Coach Belichick knows this is a big play offense, and the one thing he wants to do is take away the big play. And he's told his defensive backs, don't let anything get over your head. But also he said, try as best as you can to try to keep Russell Wilson in pocket, in the pocket, and be ready for fourth down. Just like Chris talked about, this is an aggressive offense. And we know Coach Belichick. He know We know that he's going to add some type of wrinkle, whether it's drop, dropping nine guys, rushing two. Belichick can do anything. Well, let's take it over to the other side of the ball mm-hmm. with Cam Newton on offense, right? right? We know that it's it's Pete Carroll. It's Seattle. It's Legion of Boom. These are old school defensive coach like this guy. What do they always say? We're going to take, away the, take run. away the run. They're going to load the box up. Seattle always does that. And then what Rodney talked about with Jamal Adams and things like that, him close to the line of scrimmage, his ability to blitz everything there. I do think this will be a night with the unproven wide receiving core of the New England Patriots, and we haven't seen Cam have the throw yet in New England. Tonight's going to be the night I think he's going to have to win with his right arm. Nobody better to talk about safety play. Rodney, I know you've been all over Jamal Adams and his fit with Seattle. He could be a great one to watch here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Mike. You have to treat him like he's a linebacker. We'll see a lot of Jamal Adams 
at the line of scrimmage, and Cam doesn't have to look for him because he's blitzing. He's, he wants to sack the quarterback. He's at his very best when he's moving forward. He's aggressive. He's a physical player with a tremendous motor, and you've seen the impact that he had on Bobby Wagner, Quadre Diggs. These guys are raising the level of their games. He's been outstanding. But, Coach, the one thing I want to see is can he cover over his three-year career Coach, he only has two interceptions, so try to get him in his face. And if they get him in space, they're going to try to, they're going to try to get him um, in in the passing game. Chris, it'll be fun to watch. You know, Jamal yeah. Adams is so used to seeing the Patriots, but not these Patriots. Not no. these it's Patriots. all different. So it'll be fun to watch tonight. Of course, Jamal was with the Jets. Guy used to be with the Jets as well. Pete Carroll. He and Bill Belichick. It's the oldest head coaching matchup in NFL history. They're not oldies, but goodies. They're oldie but greaties. <laughs> these guys are so good. Fans will settle and enjoy this one. Pat to the Seahawks. Looking forward to hanging out watching Sunday Night Football with you. Something that my wife and I are very passionate about is uh, IJM, International Justice Mission. In the world today, we probably have more slaves than there have ever been in the world at any point in time in history. There are men, there are women, there are children that are being held against their will, doing things that they don't want to do, separated from families. There's sexual abuse, there's violence, there's domestic abuse. So International Justice Mission is a is an operation that goes in and, and seeks to identify these people in need, ultimately rescue them, and from there, restore them back to their whole self. We've been sharing those all year. Causes players are embracing. Matthew Slater, now 10 years with the Patriots. He's a captain. Brady's gone. Gronk's gone. Guskowski's gone. He's the longest tenured Patriot. Great conversation with Slater and Arlie and McHugh. You can see that on NBCSports.com. Guys, let's get to the highlights. Welcome to those of you, by the way, watch Arizona go to 2-0 beat Washington. Tony, your old stomping grounds in Indianapolis. Colts, Vikings, Kirk Cousins struggled week one, struggled again here today. Safety here. Yeah, and there is just no continuity in this passing game, no timing, and the protection has not been great either. As far as Buckner with the sack, this is one of three games of fans today. The fans cheered that Colts defense early, and Cousins, there's nothing to cheer about for the Minnesota side. Six of 17, two picks in the first half. Kenny Moore here, there's three interceptions on the deck. Yeah, timing again, just a little bit off on the back shoulder on that slant. Phillip Rivers had a decent day, 19 to 25, passing through a touchdown, Zach Pascal. And the Colts got the win, 28 to 11. Gardner Minshew, only one in completion week one, down 13 to Tennessee. Chris brought him back, Keelan Cole, touchdown here. He's a gamer. You're never out of it with Gardner. He does, does a great job just kind of buying time, find somebody in the back of the end zone, touchdown. They missed the extra point, so it's a seven-point game here. But next possession, seven and a half to go. It's Minshew, here Chris Thompson, the old Washington player. We're tied. That's right. Halfback wheel out of the backfield. Really nice touch on the ball with Gardner. Minshew. It wasn't a perfect day by him, but he played really well to get them back in this game. Well, Steven Gostowski, Monday night, you saw the missed field goals, three of them. Got it from 49 when it mattered here in the final 90 seconds. Tennessee up three. Late chance for Minshew trying to come back for the Jaguars, but Harold Landry comes up with the pick. Man, just a good job getting a... You know, Simmons gets his hands in the way of the passing lane. Harold Landry comes down with the pick. Game over. Sorry, Jacksonville. Yeah, Titans 2-0. First yeah. time in a dozen years. Brady's never opened 0-2. What would happen today? Pats fans, your Tommy highlights are coming up. And wow, how about the comeback for Dallas against Atlanta? We'll show it to you as football night continues after this. Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. And all the new faces in new places. Camps with the Pats, but his old tight end from 2011 to last year, Greg Olson. Come give me a hug, man. I miss you. He's now with the Seahawks, part of the pass catching crew for Russell Wilson. DK Metcalf's part of that crew as well. DK spoke with Jack Collinsworth just a few minutes ago. 
DK, you said this week that the Seahawks offense has a different mentality this year. How would you define the new mindset? Um, I mean, we call it the mama mentality. So, you know, we try to destroy uh, anything in our way. And, uh, you know, we control our own destiny. And, uh, you know, nobody, nobody can stop us. And Belichick said this week that he doesn't see anybody better than Russ. How has pairing with Wilson impacted your career? Uh, I mean, he, he's a pro bowler, you know, a future Hall of Famer. And, uh, you know, his, his, his play style is, is different uh, in, than what I'm used to. So, you know, once a play breaks down, you know, it's always a second play and he can extend plays, uh, you know, past the first play call. And you get that Belichick defense tonight. Potential matchup with Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore. What's unique about that challenge? Uh, I mean, it's just another challenge, uh, you know, I'm willing to take on. Like you said, he's the reigning Defensive Player of the Year. So, uh, you know, just looking forward to the matchup, looking forward to the, uh, you know, matchup against the Patriots and as a whole. So, you know, just can't wait. DK, really appreciate your time, man. Best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's cool. I'm warming up there. DK Vincent with Jackie at 95 yards last week. Really a difference maker in that uh, let Russ be Russ. Let's right. go. Let no him, doubt. Let play. Uh, speaking of passing and excitement, as Mr. Sims holds the ball, Josh Allen. Be ready. This is your new guy, huh? Oh, it's my guy right here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 312 week one. Career high. Let's blow that career high out in Miami. Stephon Diggs, this is a nice combination. It really is. It's developing into a special combination. Diggs, they put the ball in Josh Allen's hands this year. This is what's interesting. But then we have the rain. Yes. Yeah, Come on, weather. September tradition in Miami. Lightning delay, 36 minutes. The Dolphins, they always play well after these. Touchdown run, Jordan Howard. Miami's in the lead here by three. So can Allen respond? Respond. He does aggressively. Eight catches, 153 for Diggs. That, that's what I'm amazed by. You said it aggressively. They are going after people down the field. And Diggs, when he's one-on-one, -on -one, Josh Allen's just looking for a reason to throw the ball deep. It so he's going to do that. And then, okay, going to go in the pocket, move around, make a play. That's what he does so well, too. Off schedule and a great catch by rookie Gabe Davis here. Unbelievable. Yeah, fourth rounder from UCF. Six-yard score. Buffalo up four. And now they're sitting on a four-point lead with their third night. They're throwing the ball. I think this is what tells you like how well he's doing in practice and how well he's developed to this point. You're right. I'm thinking they're going to ground and pound, <laughs> run the clock out. No, they just let it fly. He threw for 417. Buffalo gets the win. Tony Denver playing Pittsburgh. Drew Locke sacked here by Bud Dupree, and the Denver quarterback is injured. Yeah, and the Pittsburgh defense wasn't great today, but that pass rush was relentless. You get a look and watch the right shoulder of the second-year quarterback for the Broncos oh, in there as he goes down, replaced by Jeff Driscoll. Florio has an update on the quarterback situation in a second. Ben Roethlisberger's a happy QB. He's back. He's in Pittsburgh. He's got the old Notre Dame guy, Chase Claypool, going. New target. Big receiver who is fast and physical. He has given Pittsburgh a lift in these first two games. 80 four yard throw passing Eli for eighth all time with TD tosses. Driscoll played well when he came into no offense to tight end. He really did. He kept his poise, didn't make any big mistakes and uh, gave them a lift on offense. Gave, gave, give me a little vintage Big Ben out of the oh, pocket. To his right. You can't let him scramble to his right. That's when he's dangerous, Mike. Deontay Johnson, 28 yards score. Denver trying to come back here late. <laughs> go, go, visit. I love Juju. He makes me laugh. Fourth quarter, Driscoll's going to get sacked. Yeah, he sees Edmonds, that's the hot guy. If he comes, he's got to throw it. Get Receiver it sees it. He's got to let this go, Chris. Yeah, no doubt about it. He sees it coming through. But that's the tough thing. You come in as a backup quarterback against Pittsburgh's defense, uh, it's not always easy. Yeah, so Denver's offense issues week one. The injury issues now they're 0 2. Pittsburgh's 2 0. Rodney, what about that pressure that Pittsburgh brought on the Denver quarterbacks today? Yeah, Coach talked about it. Pittsburgh defense is a really good defense. They didn't play great today, but there's a lot of holes on this defense. But if, as a quarterback, you cannot hold the ball. This team, this defense is just too fast and too athletic. Bud Dupree, T.J. Watt, these guys are motivated. They're playing for a big contract. And any time in the most critical moments of the game, you have to expect pressure. They bring everybody, linebackers, corners, safeties. They bring everyone. Yeah, Daniel Jones saw it on Monday night. Both Denver quarterbacks saw it on Sunday. And obviously, Drew Lockhart. It hurts. Let's bring in Mike Florio. Mike, what's the story with the quarterback and the injury issue for the Broncos? Well, guys, it is a shoulder injury for Drew Locke, who have an MRI Monday morning. There's concern that he'll miss some time. The team has its fingers crossed. And as you guys said, Jeff Driscoll played well, but they're low on quarterbacks. It's Driscoll. It's Brett Rippon on the practice squad. They may have to make a move if Drew Locke ends up missing any time. And with the lack of time, you didn't have a bunch of quarterbacks around in preseason, the guys to get used to your system. Some issues for the Broncos ahead. Mike's with us throughout. You heard from DK Metcalf. Go up and get one with one hand. Just like you, Mike. Uh, no. Seahawks Patriots coming up on Sunday Night Football. Good Hands Playbook.
Presented by Allstate. Keep on your mind what we're playing for. Let's go. Rolls to the right. Cam's going to run it. New in to the pylon. He's got a spike guy. Oh, an absolutely perfect on the money pass. Football Night in America is brought to you by Corona Hard Seltzer, another way to find your beach. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. And by Applebee's Dozen Double Crunch Shrimp Deal. This is no small order. Dine-in, delivery, and to go. This is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. And all of a sudden, Cam Newton is a Patriot. Um, he, he's an extremely hardworking player. Um, They're not going to take the square peg and cram it into the round no. hole. It's all about the, a, a vibe that you have to set and you curate. I just say that it, there's a perception, but at the end of the day, you know, it's the football. He's a very talented player with a unique skill set. Can Cam handle the New England way? I'm a New England Patriot. I'm just going to embrace this whole moment. Well, this marriage is odd couple. Well, it's given Florio and Sims a, a morning or two to talk about on Peacock. It but guess has. what? It's working right now. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? It does, definitely. What we saw last week, he looks rejuvenated. The offense was throwing out things we've never seen them do before. I'm interested to see what they do tonight against Pete Carroll and company. All right, that's coming up on Sunday Night Football. Let's take you some highlights of NFC North action. Detroit and Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers and team. Hey, the Lions had a double-digit lead for the fourth straight game. And they blew it for the fourth straight time. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Mike. I know you got to go back to Detroit, Michigan. But Aaron Jones, he really ruined that party with first off that touchdown catch there. And we'll have more from him coming later. Lambo Leap Sands fans. Yes. Tanya here. And a great just back shoulder throw here. The defender falls down. Rodgers throws him a missile. Touchdown. And Green Bay's offense was kind of rolling from here on out. First play, second half. Wow. Look at all the guys in the box. I mean, Matt Patricia seems like they think they're expecting run. But not exactly. Green Bay picks it up perfectly. And this is where Jones is special. He has that sixth gear to split the safeties and take it to the house. And this was kind of the end of the ball game right here. He had 168 rushing. The Packers had 259 rushing, most in 17 years. Later in the third, Stafford's picked off by Chandon Sullivan. Yeah, cre creative blitz by Mike Pettin. They blitz. They play a little zone coverage in the uh, behind it, and Stafford doesn't see the corner sitting there. Pick six. Rodgers Breeze, Green Bay, New Orleans next Sunday night. Chicago home. They rallied against Detroit last week. This week against the Giants, and this is just a killer. Saquon Barkley injured. Oh, you hate to say this, and you saw that knee buckle right there, Mike. Punching his right knee, the heart and soul of the Giants when he gets the ball, the frustration, and you can feel all the Giants fans feeling that. All right, final minute, first half. Mitch Trubisky, a lot of time, making it pay. And this is what he did really, really well. He extended the plays, he didn't panic, stayed with his reads. Darnell Mooney, fifth-round rookie, out of two late. So the Bears jumped up 17 of it, blew that lead, and the Giants start to get back in this one. What a catch here, by the way as it's pulled away for the INT by James Bradbury. So Trubisky, a little shaky here in the second half. Daniel Jones and the Giants got back in it, trying to extend the game down four. Big Man. fourth down conversion there. James in there. So the drive stays alive. They get down to the 10. They need a touchdown because it's four. Jones out of the pocket, scrambles and incomplete. And the Chicago Bears come away with their 2-0 for the first time since 2013. Time now to simplify the game. That is powered by Microsoft and Microsoft Surface. Let's talk about Trubisky yeah. because after three quarters of week one, we were ready to see he's going to be on the bench. And here comes Nick Foles. Now he's looked pretty good. Looked pretty good today. He really did. He's playing smart. He's making good decisions, throwing the ball accurate. Let's check out what he does here on my Microsoft Surface. First off, his legs are getting him out of trouble, and he's not making stupid mistakes. Pocket's clean, doesn't like what he sees downfield, gets out of the pocket, goes, I'm a good athlete, dumps the ball off to David Montgomery. Look what happens. You got playmakers on your offense. Let them go. Touchdown Bears. Then the next time around, coach, screenplay. Look at this. What do they always, what does coaches like Tony Dungy always throw say? Away, throw, throw it away. away. Don't make a bad play worse. He's smart to realize I'm not going to throw this ball through all these bodies. I got a little lane to run. I got blockers downfield. Let me turn on the Jets, go down the sideline. First down, Chicago Bears. So I like this year 
He's using his legs mm -hmm. and just a little smarter with decision making. He's keeping his eyes up the field right. as he scrambles, still looking for things, no not doubt. just taking it down and running right. right away. Trubisky and the Bears win. Aaron Jones and the Packers win two big key NFC North performances. Mike, you spoke with Mitchell Trubisky about his performance today and the pressure he's been under. And I've spoken to Mitchell Trubisky multiple times in the past. Something's different about him now. He's relaxed. He's confident. He's sure of himself. And he told me that back during the early days of the pandemic when there was nothing to do, that's when the Bears acquired Nick Foles. And that's when he took that time to reflect and to decide what he wanted to be as an NFL quarterback. And that made him put in the work, put in the effort, and do what needed to be done to win that starting job. And as to Foles, you know, he was brought there because of all the other offenses or because of knowing that offense. What Trubisky told me is it's all the other offenses that Foles has been a part of. He brought that information. He's made their offense better. I also spoke to Aaron Jones. And I said to Aaron Jones, are you, are you guys better this year than last year? And he said, we definitely are. It's because we're in year two of the Matt LaFleur offense, plain and simple. Everyone is more comfortable. They know the offense. And I asked him about this idea that Aaron Rodgers is upset because they drafted a quarterback in round one. He said that's not the cause. The focus is getting back to where they were last year and doing better, getting to a Super Bowl for the second time in Rodgers' career. 236 total yards from scrimmage sunglasses before the snow goggles <laughs> at the end of the year in Green Bay. Packers Saints next Sunday night. Saints play tomorrow night against the Las Vegas Raiders. There is Russell Wilson taking the field for the Seahawks against the Patriots on Sunday Night Football. Simplify the game. Powered by Microsoft Surface, the official sideline technology provider of the NFL. This is Football Night in America, served by Applebee's. The team. All right, it is time for Sunday Night 7 Picks or the second Sunday of the season. We've already had one jackpot winner who's $100,000 richer. So, Rodney, let's help the folks out. Who's going to score the first touchdown of the game tonight? Mike, I'm going to go a little unconventional. I'm going to go with Chris Carson. He's not really known for his receiving skills. He had six catches last week, but I think they're trying to get the backs more involved in the passing game. You see James White is out there. He is a surprise and active. Mike Florio will give you the details why in a couple of minutes. Make your picks on the NBC Sports Predictor app. $100,000 jackpot. Every contest which we've seen can be won. All right, let's get you back to the highlights. The 49ers in this division. We mentioned the injuries earlier against the Jets. We have some high-end scientific statistical data in the upper left corner. How many Jet <laughs> defenders touch Raheem Mostert? None. Uh, uh, wow. That's the way to start the game. 80-yard touchdown, 7 nothing. That is not next gen. That is same Jets. Eight straight games with a touchdown for Mostert. We mentioned the injuries. No Richard Sherman, no D Ford, no George Kittle, no Debo Samuel, and Jimmy Garoppolo hurts his ankle here. He would stay in the game. Now, first quarter, it's a Frank Gore run for the Jets against his old team. Nick Bosa blocked into him, injures his knee on this play. That's not good news, and there's more on that in a minute. Two plays later, Solomon Th Thomas, another defensive lineman who was carted off. Man, Kyle Shanahan, the Niners, what a brutal day. But the hobbled Garoppolo does a good job here, Chris, with Jordan Reed. He definitely does. He played well and played through the injury. Jordan Reed has been a savior. No George Kittle. To have this guy come in to be that guy that replaces him for Kyle Shanahan's offense has been big so far. Jordan Reed, who was in Washington, hasn't scored a touchdown in a couple of years. Let's do it a couple of times on this day. Yeah, great throw. Tight coverage. Garoppolo was decisive with decisions and very accurate with the ball all day. Now, now Kyle's going, you got to get us more players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> John Lynch got to figure that out. They do get the victory. Hey, this Arizona offense, Kingsbury, Murray, Hopkins, Tony, they're pretty good together. Loving DeAndre Hopkins, even though everybody knows he's going to get the ball. Uh -huh. You're right, Coach. You're eight, right. Eight times today, Dwayne Haskins was pressured more today. Welcome to Hyundai's Sunday Night Kickoff. Gating is a little bit different this year, but some things they remain the same. The big game. Let's go one and let's go win this thing. Patriots. Everybody doing their job. Super Bowl 49. I haven't forgotten. I tried to forget. I can't. Russell's gonna lay it up. Is at the one, the one yard line. We know what's going to happen, don't we? Second and goal. It's going to be a pass, not a pass. Pass is through, through the ball. 
Intercepted at the goal line. Ah! Oh, no! Unreal. Ah! I cannot believe the call. Where did he come from? Malcolm Butler. Amazing. Okay, yeah. You got the mastermind. Super cam? Did you miss me? I get it. I do. What's that? That's a man right there, boy. We? We got QB3, Russell Wilson. Russell looks he's going to lay it up over the top. You see him last week? He was cooking. Touchdown! Seahawks! And I guarantee you this. He hasn't forgotten. So tonight, revenge takes flight on Sunday Night Football. Welcome to a more quiet Seattle, Washington than we are used to. The 12th man will be missed as we get set for the next chapter between two of the greatest, Belichick and Carroll. And on the topic of best, Russell Wilson has never looked better than he did week one against Atlanta. And that's where we will start on the field live, presented by Hyundai. And one of his favorite targets, DK Metcalf, told me earlier today, Russ and this offense call it the Mamba mentality. They want to destroy everything in their way, so we'll see if they can do that against this Patriot defense tonight, Mike. Well, Jack, on the other side, it's been 43 years since a Patriots quarterback has run for as many yards as Cam did last week. 75. Two rushing touchdowns. See how will be ready for that. We'll see how he handles it. It's Cam against Russ. We've seen it before. We'll see it again on Sunday Night Football in 22 minutes. Get you the highlights of the best games of the day. Speaking of quarterback matchups, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson. It is Baltimore and Houston. What a tough draw for Houston. KC and Baltimore out of the gate. Man. Made somebody mad. No kidding. 3-0 Baltimore. Baltimore, it's Lamar, Patrick Ricard, the fullback, one-yard touchdown, 10-0. Jackson was 18 of 24, not a ton in the air. What about that catch? That was the fullback, defense end. It Who was. is he? Now it's Deshaun Watson, it's Darren Fells. He caught seven touchdowns last year. There's his first, it's 10-7. Here's a big play. Watson is going to find Kiki QT, but he fumbles, and LJ Ford picks it up. Yeah, the Ravens, they're just so opportunistic. They're so good on the defensive side of the ball. They're good on both sides of the ball. But for forcing this fumble, when they were kind of controlling the game, you thought, oh, now the Texans might have a chance to come back, and this pretty much closed the door on, on that effort. 22-yard score there. I love this play design coming up here. They're in the lead. They're going to try to run it. They ran for 230 yards. We're going to go Mark Ingram direct snap on fourth and one. They have so many plays in their arsenal that you aren't used to seeing. Wildcats on short yardage with three tight ends. How creative. And the win for the Ravens. Just one more look at it. Ricard, the fullback, who had the how many touchdowns? Yeah, I mean, how many? I mean, there's thousands of pounds there. They loaded it up. They got it done. 33-16. Poor Houston. Rough start. 67 points allowed. First two games. This game went overtime in so far. The Chiefs and the Chargers. Chargers first game in that new beautiful palace. Tyrod Taylor, chest injury ruled out after re-injuring in the pregame. So Justin Herbert from Oregon, the sixth round pick. Here we go. You get to start first drive of the game. Look terrific. Gonna keep it himself. A little play action, and again, just be patient, make a good read, pound it in there. Hey, this is what Joe Burrow started for Cincinnati, yeah. running a touchdown in. That's right. Justin Urban now in the pocket makes an unbelievable throw to the back left left corner of the end zone there, and you're going, okay, they're not gonna be flustered here on offense today. No, Jalen got 14 6. Everything looked good. Here, here we go, fourth quarter. Oh, just another day in the park, Mike. Ridiculous. Oh, run to the right. 55 yards <laughs> on the move, rolling to your right, and <laughs> Just put it right on the money. Coach's uh, jaw fell uh, after this round. It. No, <laughs> and Tyreek, he was not touched. So he just kind of tumbled on into the end zone. Two-point conversion was good. The two-point conversion was unbelievable, too. All even at 17. So can Herbert and the Chargers get it down the field to score inside the five there? A nice little run. They get a field goal. So it's 20 to 17. Mahomes got the ball. He's got two and a half minutes. They move it down the field. Scrambling here. Well, it what do you do against them? We've got to worry about deep bombs underneath throws. Double covering everybody. Right. And that, now you've got a running lane. Third and 20. In the fourth quarter, he was 10 of 14 for 155. Had that run. Butker hit a 58-yarder earlier. This one from 30. Sends it to overtime. Nice rally there. So the Chargers go three and out. Anthony Lynn punched the ball back to Mahomes. Not going to see it back. Fourth and one, Darwin Thompson. Gets the first down. This was clutch. Gutsy call by Andy Reid to go for it. Yeah, so they get field range. Butker from 58 wow. is good. After he made a 53, there was a false start. Made a 58, there was a timeout. Then from 58, gets a 258-yard field goals in the game from Harrison Butker. Kansas City wins a thriller 23-20. Rodney, we know Mahomes, but we got to see Herbert for the first time. What would you think of the rookie quarterback? I was really impressed with Justin Herbert. Um, he showed 
a tremendous amount of athleticism getting outside the pocket, but he also showed a lot of poise. You think about him going toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes. He made one mistake. He threw an interception in a critical moment, but... Anthony Lynn, don't overthink this. You have a really good young quarterback. Continue to build on this. He can continue to build on confidence. This is the guy that he should be starting, not Tyrod Taylor. Rodney, I met Justin Herbert last summer in Eugene, Oregon. He could have come out the year before, been a top five pick, wanted to come back. He wanted to throw to his brother, but he also wanted to win a national championship. That told me, hey, this guy is something special. He's not thinking about money, individual things. Everybody raves about him out there, the type of leader he is. I agree with Rodney. They've got a winner. Yeah, they do. Uh, and then the other game we'd watch, the Baltimore Ravens, what they're going, what they're doing right now. I mean, defense is really good, but their ability. Last week it was Lamar Jackson in the pass game. Whoa, he looks mm-hmm. polished. This week it's run with every running back we got on the roster and Lamar Jackson. They just look like they're in like midseason form right now. All right, so they're the young quarterbacks. We're getting those figured out. Mahomes is terrific as usual. Lamar's the MVP. What about Tom Brady? Would he go 0-2 for the first time in his career? It's Brady in Tampa, the home debut against Carolina. Brett Favre was there. What is he doing? What? Brett Favre in a Bucks t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in this world? His face is as red as the Bucky the Buccaneer it, there. It, it is 2020. <laughs> it's Favre in Tampa in a Bucks shirt, but he's there to see Tom, and there is Brady getting off to a good start with Mike Evans there. That's twenty three yards there. there. Yeah, Evans had seven for 104 time now for the Sunday night game flow presented by Progressive. They got a flea flicker here, Mike. To Tom Brady's going to catch it. And it's not the prettiest completion of his career. He kind of throws a wobbling duck down there. But I can tell you, first off, watch this replay. He doesn't get the laces in his hands. And September football in Tampa, as Coach Dungy can tell you, the ball is like a watermelon. It's so sweaty, and everybody's dripping all over it. The running back just had it. So you're just happy with the completion there. Good job by Bruce Arians and Brady. There's your Sunday night game flow. Is it a Tom's happy. He's like, I got it there. When it ran in, it was 21. The smile comes off the face, though, here at Dante Jackson interception second half. And again, still trying to get that chemistry with Rob Gronkowski. It's not quite there, Chris. No, it's not. It was under a little pressure. Didn't know where to go with the ball. Three picks, first two games. Panthers come back here, getting it close. Christian McCaffrey going to take it in from seven yards out. He left late in the fourth with an ankle injury. Uh, Tom's trying to fire him up Tampa style this time. It is a seven-point game. There's tons of time left, but Carlton Davis picks Bridgewater. Yeah, Bridgewater just off target on this throw. He had an open DJ Moore, throws the ball just a few feet behind. But at this point of the game, you're going, whoa, the momentum had flipped back to Carolina. Well, here's how you close it out. It's four net for 46 to close the deal. And this is a exactly why they got Leonard Fournette. When we had the lead at the end of the game, that big back to pound it out, right, you know, seal the game for it. Here for 103, one of 600-yard rushers on the day. What a wild game in Dallas. First off, we had fans, 21,708, largest attendance of the season. So the Cowboys don't have their tackles, Lel Collins and Tyron Smith, and Dak was pressured early. Yeah, and Dallas was sloppy with the ball early, Mike. Just a mm-hmm. uh, fumble here. Dak, you got to protect it in that situation. That led to a Calvin Ridley touchdown. 7 nothing Falcons. Then Zeke. Ezekiel is stripped by Foyer Lucan. That's his high school teammate who forced three fumbles in the first quarter. And the Atlanta Falcons jumped out 17 nothing. This is another one. Dalton Schultz gets stripped by Lucan. Yeah, just a little screen pass. And he does a great job punching the ball out. Atlanta's defense was just opportunistic early on. And, and like Coach said, Dallas was sloppy. It's 20 nothing Atlanta in Dallas in the first quarter. What in the wide world of Jerry World is going on? They come back, got touchdowns 27, but here's Matt Ryan to Calvin Ridley, and the Falcons are building another big lead. Ridley in the back of the end zone is becoming one of the go-to targets for Matt Ryan. The third quarter, the margin is 12. Atlanta's got it. It's just, uh, Russell Gage directs that, and Tulio Jones was hoping for a touchdown. Yes. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? They might have put the game away. Julio Jones, he catches that in his sleep. I I, I couldn't believe it. They were stretching out hamstring issues. So Dallas doesn't go down 19. They're still down 12. Dak up top. Oh, what a catch. Amari Cooper, 58 yards. Atlanta, you're up 12. How are you letting Amari Cooper behind you with no free safety? Mm, That's the question. It starts to put the pressure on. Prescott had to come out for a bit. Comes back in. Runs it in. Dak threw it for 450, by the way, today. Atlanta's lead is down to five. Fourth quarter now. 
It's Ryan. It's Gage who threw it when Julio couldn't catch it. He catches it. Atlanta's up 12 again. So they're in good shape, right? Well, this game gets wild. There's a two-point conversion that they go for and they don't get after a touchdown here. But Dallas is back 39-37. So here comes Greg DeLay. Greg Zerline. We're going to have an onside kick. No T. We're just going to throw it down and kick it. And watch this little whirly bird helicopter. Go get on it, Atlanta. Somebody recover And it. watch it. They did. Bones fossils out there. That's our ball. That's Dallas special team. But wait a minute. Yeah, it is. Dallas recovers. Yeah, you think you practice everything and prepare. I, I'm sure they didn't prepare for a kick like this, the twister. This was a new up. one. Yeah, we might see this be the new fad for the onside kick. <laughs> hey, yeah, we got it. Everson Griffin's react. The only one better than Jerry Jones and Prescott in the offense react. C.D. Lamb for 24. And this is why they drafted him in the first round, to run routes like this in pressure situations when you need it. So Zerline's in position. Uh, his whirly bird kick was the star. Now can he close it out for the team with the star? From 46 and the Dallas Cowboys with an incredible comeback. Biggest blown lead for Atlanta since oh, no. Super Bowl 51. Oh, I just report what the facts. Jerk. <laughs> and Dak, terrific day. They avoid going 0-2. Mr. Prescott puts up 450. Four total touchdowns. He ran for three touchdowns. So he's the first player in the history of the league. That's 101 years to throw for four and rush for three. Rodney, at Dak Prescott, that's a great second half in a season that would have gone south really quick if the Cowboys opened 0-2 with that kind of loss at home. Well, first, I have to give a lot of credit to head coach Mike McCarthy. This team was down 29 to 10 at halftime. They never gave up. They continue to believe. But it just shows you what type of leader and the type of belief that they have in Dak Prescott. Jerry, stop tripping. Pay the man. He is a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like his agent. <laughs> hey, I'm happy for Mike McCarthy. He's a great guy. Gets his first win. He got a game ball. Boy, it's a good thing they won or else he would have been hearing about it like he did last <laughs> week. I, I really didn't understand that at 39-30, mm -hmm. you're down nine kick the extra point and make it a one-score game. If you miss, if you go for two and miss it, now you still need Back two into scores. two scores. It just didn't make sense. No, it did not make sense. I, I don't get it either. They made them, it made it harder on them, but regardless, they were lucky to pull out the win. It was a big win for them. I'm a little concerned about Dallas's defense going forward, too. That's, good point. That's one thing we haven't hit on these two weeks. Offense, we know they got weapons. Defense, uh, not great up front. Secondaries let up a lot of big plays, too. And let me come back to Tampa here. We saw the Tampa highlights. Uh, give me the week two Tom Brady reaction. I think a little bit more timing mm -hmm. there. We saw the double move to Mike Evans. He wasn't open, hooked it up. They were right on the same page. Last week, you talked about Mike Evans not reading things with right. Tom Brady right. So I, I think that is coming. Their defense made some plays, made though. Some made, plays. made the takeaways. Definitely. I, I, we saw more. I, thought, I felt like, and Coach and I were talking about this during the game, more Tom Brady New England plays today, I thought, okay. especially early on. Last week, it seemed like it was Bruce Arians. Let's push the ball down the field. You know, no biscuit, no risk it. Right. Uh, this week, it was a little bit more of let's get the high percentage underneath stuff. What a day. More offense again. I mean, there's so many games that were high scoring and exciting, and that one with Atlanta was uh, just a crusher for the Falcons. Yeah. They have so many chances to win games. Uh, it feels like we see the same story every week. We're going to see the same story with Cam this week. Is he going to run it 15 times? We'll see. They're in Seattle against Russell Wilson, who was fabulous against the Falcons in week one. Pete Carroll, he knows a thing or two about the Patriots, a place where he used to work. Bill Belichick, 3.0, 4.0 with the Patriots. It's the Pats and the Seahawks Sunday Night Football coming up in 10 minutes. Uh, Russell Gage directs that, and Tulio Jones is open for a touchdown. Yes. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? They might have put the game away. Julio Jones, he catches that in his sleep. I, I, I couldn't believe it. They were stretching out hamstring issues. So Dallas doesn't go down 19. They're still down 12. Dak up top. Oh, what a catch. Amari Cooper, 58 yards. Atlanta, you're up 12. How are you letting Amari Cooper behind you with no free safety? Mm, that's the question. It starts to put the pressure on. Prescott had to come out for a bit. Comes back in. Runs it in. Dak threw it for 450, by the way, today. Atlanta's lead is down to five. Fourth quarter now. It's Ryan. It's Gage who threw it when Julio couldn't catch it. He catches it. Atlanta's up 12 again. So they're in good shape, right? Well, this game gets wild. There's a two-point conversion that they go for and they don't get after a touchdown here. But Dallas is back 39-37. So here comes Greg DeLay. Greg Zerline. We're going to have an onside kick. No T. We're just going to throw it down and kick it. And watch this little whirly bird helicopter. Go get on it, Atlanta. Somebody recover And it. watch it. They did. 
Bones Fossil's out there. That's our ball. That's Dallas special team. But well, wait a minute. Yeah, it is. Dallas recovers. Yeah, you think you practice everything and prepare. I, I'm sure they didn't prepare for a kick like this, the twister. This was so a new one. Yeah, we might see this be the new fad for the onside kick. In the NFL. Hey, yeah, Everson, we got it. Everson Griffin's react, the only one better than Jerry Jones and Prescott. The offense reacts. C.D. Lamb for 24. And this is why they drafted him in the first round, to run routes like this in pressure situations when you need it. So Zerline's in position. Uh, his whirly bird kick was the star. Now can he close it out for the team with the star? From 46 in the Dallas Cowboys with an incredible comeback. Biggest blown lead for Atlanta since oh, no. Super Bowl 50. Oh, don't say, don't say. The oh, I just report the facts. What a jerk. <laughs> Dak, terrific day. They avoid going 0-2. Mr. Prescott puts up 450. Four total touchdowns. He ran for three touchdowns. So he's the first player in the history of the league. That's 101 years to throw for four and rush for three. Rodney, at Dak Prescott, that's a great second half in a season that would have gone south really quick if the Cowboys opened 0-2 with that kind of loss at home. Well, first, I have to give a lot of credit to head coach Mike McCarthy. This team was down 29 to 10 at halftime. They never gave up. They continue to believe. But it just shows you what type of leader and the type of belief that they have in Dak Prescott. Jerry, stop tripping. Pay the man. He is a franchise player. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like his agent. <laughs> hey, I'm happy for Mike McCarthy. He's a great guy. Gets his first when He got a game ball. Boy, it's a good thing they won or else he would have been hearing about it like he did last <laughs> week. I, I really didn't understand that. At 39-30, mm -hmm. you're down nine. Kick the extra point and make it a one-score game. If you miss, if you go for two and miss it, now you still need back two into scores. two scores. It just didn't make sense. No, it did not make sense. I, I don't get it either. They made them it made it harder on them, but regardless, they were lucky to pull out the win. It was a big win for them. I'm a little concerned about Dallas's defense going forward too. That's a good point. That's one thing we haven't hit on these two weeks. Offense, we know they got weapons. Defense. Uh, not great up front. Secondary's let up a lot of big plays, too. And let me come back to Tampa here. We saw the Tampa highlights. Uh, give me the week two Tom Brady reaction. I think a little bit more timing mm -hmm. there. We saw the double move to Mike Evans. He wasn't open, hooked it up. They were right on the same page. Last week, you talked about Mike Evans not reading things with right. Tom Brady right. So I, I think that is coming. Their defense made some plays, made though. Some made, plays. made the takeaway. Definitely. I, I, we saw more, I, thought, I felt like, and Coach and I were talking about this during the game, more Tom Brady New England plays today, I thought, okay. especially early on. Last week, it seemed like it was Bruce Arians. Let's push the ball down the field. You know, no biscuit, no risk it. Right. Uh, this week, it was a little bit more of let's get the high percentage underneath stuff. What a day. More offense again. I mean, there's so many games that were high scoring and exciting. And that one with Atlanta was uh, just a crusher for the Falcons. Yeah. They have so many chances to win games. Uh, feels like we see the same story every week. We're going to see the same story with Cam this week. Is he going to run it 15 times? We'll see. They're in Seattle against Russell Wilson, who was fabulous against the Falcons in week one. Pete Carroll, he knows a thing or two about the Patriots, a place where he used to work. Bill Belichick, 3.0, 4.0 with the Patriots. It's the Pats and the Seahawks Sunday Night Football coming up in 10 minutes. If you're an AFC team, you only visit each NFC city every eight years. How about New England? You get to go to Seattle where there are no fans. What a huge <laughs> opportunity it is. Yeah. The Seahawks at home, it's a little bit different story. Seven minutes to kick off without Chris and Michelle. Sunday Night Football coming up. But first, we have the best of week two, brought to you by Verizon. This is 5G built right, and it's Jimmy G. Ankle injury, team beat up, but still a couple of touchdowns to Jordan Reed. Yeah, played well, was accurate, was decisive, and Jordan Reed has been great for them without George Kittle. Niners get their first win. Jets are 0-2. All about Jared Goff and Tyler Higby for the Rams today, Tony. Yes, yeah, Sean McVay dialed up several creative ways to get it to Tyler Higby. This is the throwback off the bootleg. Eagles 0-2 for the first time in five years. In the NFC North, Detroit becomes the first team in NFL history to have four consecutive double-digit leads and lose all four games. It was the Aaron Show, Rodgers and Jones. It was, and it's more Jones today, but Aaron Rodgers played well, but Aaron Jones, with the running game and passing game, uh, had a great day, Mike. Two games, 85 points for the Packers. We see them in New Orleans next Sunday night on NBC. What a game, Kansas City and the Chargers. Harrison Butker hit two 58-yard field goals. He's definitely getting a game ball. Bomb two when they really needed them, but of course, Patrick Mahomes Mahomes was fantastic, getting him in position. Yeah, Mahomes, sixth time he's been down double digits, and he's won. Crazy, six in a row. Josh Allen lighting it up, Chris. Here. Third and nine, you're thinking, they're not going to trust Josh Allen. Oh, yes, they do. This is the new Buffalo Bills. John Brown, touchdown. He threw for 4-17 today. Buffalo is 2-0. 
2-0. and Tom Brady gets win one in home game one for the Bucks. Chris Godwin out. Mike Evans steps up. Their back shoulder off a double move. Great communication. This is the timing they're looking for. Atlanta-Dallas, this is a wild game. So a team trailing in the fourth <laughs> quarter recovers an onside kick and wins a game. Hasn't happened in the NFL since Seattle-Green Bay, that memorable 2015 playoff game. Down nine. Everson Griffin can't believe the recovery, and the Cowboys' great zero line wins it. Yeah, big, big, big field goal. Cowboys just staying with it. Really had no business winning this game. You wanted to say lucky. I and did. I was I was going to say lucky, right? You're right, Coach, I was. But either way, they got it, and they'll take it. And there is the Verizon <laughs> best of week two, uh, the worst of week two, the injuries. Saquon Barkley's knee injury looked bad for the Giants. Drew Locke, the starting quarterback for the Broncos, hurt. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's ankle with Carolina. I want to go to San Francisco there. They were beat up already. We don't even have room. We could put an entire page of 49ers injuries Chris, what will this do to the San Francisco team? Yeah, it's concerning. I mean, Kyle Shanahan's running out of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Debo Samuel was already not out there. You know, George Kittle wasn't out there. Now we got Raheem Mostert going to the side, you know, going to the to the locker room at halftime. And Bosa and the pass rush, it's so imperative to that defense and what they do. It kind of sets the tone for their football team to not have Bosa, D Ford banged up. Uh they're, they're climbing, they're climbing uphill right now. Yeah, I agree. And and then, it's gonna be tough. You know, last year the strength of the team was ro rolling all those defenses. Right. Right. Yes. And they're keeping people fresh. That's now gone. You're getting those injuries. Yeah, that yeah. is going to be tough for them. Yeah, Solomon Thomas carted off two yep. plays after Bozo. All right, turn our attention to the Seattle-New England game. Time for home team picks brought to you by Lowe's. Jack Collinsworth, you lead us off. Well, Mike, 73% of the country is on Seattle. It's night one on the job. I got to go with America. I'm <laughs> standing up here on top of the world. I'm hanging out with Blitz. It's an absolute no-brainer. It's an absolute no-brainer. I'm on the Hawks. How about you, Mike Florio? Hey, you know, if they were playing like this game master. later in the year, I'd be tempted to go with the Patriots because there's more time for Cam Newton to gel with that offense. For now, though, I'm on the Seahawks as well. Rodney, how about you? I know the Patriots are playing with um, heavy hearts with James White and everything that's going on with him. But I just look at the Seattle Seahawks. If you can't beat this, this Patriot team with the type of weapons that they have, you're not going to go very far in the playoffs. I like Seattle tonight. Mike Ooh. Trico? All right. Yeah, Seattle. Like, hard to go against them at home. I'm going to go with New England. I what? think they got the secondary to match up with these receivers, and I think this running offense with Cam Newton is still going to be a pain in the butt early on in the season, even for Pete Carroll. Yeah, I, I struggle with this one, but I'm going to go with you, Chris. I think the Patriots, oh. a couple of reasons, that great secondary. Oh. Bill Belichick always takes away what you do best, and you mentioned it, no 12th man tonight. Yeah, it'll be it's very tonight. different. Yeah. There are the hometown picks Brought to you by Lowe. It's been a terrific weekend. Stanley Cup final got started. Bryson DeChambeau, awesome at the U.S. Open. Terrific day of football. Kick your feet up. Enjoy the end of the weekend. Seattle and New England, two of the best brands in the league on Sunday Night Football. Al, Chris, and Michelle standing by. Carrie Underwood, as always, kicks us off. Enjoy the game. We'll see you at halftime. Thanks for watching Football Night in America. Let's go with Sunday Night Football now here on NBC. This has been the Hyundai Sunday Night Kickoff. Spanish language audio provided by Telemundo Deportes. Or watch tonight's game in Spanish on Universo.